Catalan. Hi everyone, good morning and welcome to Technocrime Fighters Forum episode number 71. This is Ramola D, a Ramola D report. I'm here this morning with Dr. Catherine Horton and with Karen Mountain Stewart. And Catherine, I think you're sharing a screen. Oh. Um, I don't know if you intended that. No. Um, <laughs> okay, now you're not. All right. So, um, well, we're just here as usual to continue our conversation, our public conversation about surveillance abuse in the USA and in Europe, in every country of Europe, really, and across the world, including in all of the so-called Five Eyes countries, Australia, New Zealand, um, Canada, England, and, uh, well, I guess you call it UK, the United Kingdom, and the US, um, as well as all of the other countries of the world who unfortunately appear to be un in the grip of the um, global New World Disorder, Gestapo, who um, appear to have um, suppressed all of our governments and militaries and intelligence agencies and taken over from the inside. Um, one of the things we are very concerned about, obviously, as we've been speaking about this, investigating and reporting about, um, is the use of radiation weapons on people, radiation and sonic weapons, neuro weapons, etc. All of the weaponry and warfare of the new century, electronic warfare, neuro warfare, etc. And we are here to speak openly and to witness and bear, bear witness openly to the fact that these weapons are indeed being used. People's brains are being accessed. People's bodies are being accessed remotely. Local PDs have access to weaponry of this nature through through wall surveillance radar, etc. Uh, defense contractors are running weapons testing projects and directed energy bio behavioral research projects. Um, and as well, we have the dark agencies like the CIA, DIA, NSA engaging in very dark neuro experimentation, which they will not confess to, but which we have much evidence goes on through things like the John St. Clair Aquai lawsuit, through Dr. Robert Duncan's disclosures, a person who worked for the CIA and DOD, and various other whistleblowers and scientists, as well as the reports of thousands and really millions of people worldwide, um, bearing witness online, speaking out on social media, speaking out about the use of terrible neurotechnologies on their bodies and brains, such as V2K, voice to skull, um, electronic dreams, synthetic dreams, synthetic images being pumped into their heads, etc., etc. So obviously, obviously, we're living in a very dystopian kind of world today, and mainstream media would like you to believe that um, this is not so, because they simply conveniently forget to cover it. But we're here to tell you otherwise. So welcome, um, Catherine and Karen. And, you know, let me turn the floor over to whichever one of you wants to um, cover this. I, I'm very happy to say I just posted Karen's brilliant flyer addressed to law enforcement, which I hope she'll read out a little bit later on, um, which is titled Attention Law Enforcement to Sheriffs and Police Deputies, in, uh, Police and Sheriffs Deputies in particular. Are you Oath Keepers or are, are you oath breakers? You know, brilliant and pointed and highly poignant question to be directed to that contingent. So um, that's the highlight of my morning. <laughs> <laughs> I get a bug in my bonnet and then out comes a flyer or a letter. <laughs> I have to say they're highly, highly um, successful, these flyers, because I've now found, um, so there was last time we mentioned the, the sheriffs trying to, uh, to damp on these flyers by claiming oh there was fentanyl on these and then i found another article from a few years back i think all the way back to 2012 or something and there was another flyer uh, campaign where again the sheriff's department warned of these flyers and people shouldn't touch them and it was oh. again total nonsense um i have to dig it out ramola pointed it out to me that's actually not happening right now but it's several years old i didn't see the timestamp but it was almost the same story. And it's clear that the um, police uh, stations are now in so much trouble um, that they are desperate to try to contain uh, the, the use of this. So I think our uh, flyering is hugely successful. And I, I really recommend everybody go to um, Ramola. Ramola, would you like to bring it up and actually show us? Where oh, we sure. Yeah, why don't I share a screen? Because, uh, yeah. And... Uh, yeah. I think I think this is the best thing that victims can do today, you know, without doing anything else. The best thing you can do is download these flyers and just distribute them, you know. Oh, great. My screen just went blank. Can you still hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you. And I can also can hear me. 
I can also yes. can still see me. Can you see my screen? Because my screen is absolutely black Ooh, at this point. I can, can see, see you, but not the screen, uh, except that it is black. Yeah. Um, I wanted to add that the Houston flyer was not my flyer. It was uh, that of another group. But thank goodness the attempt to smear them absolutely totally failed and made the police look really incredibly foolish. Okay. So that tells you how desperate they are that people not get flyers. Yeah. And the question to ask is why is it that a police force um, in charge of investigating crime is desperate about victims trying to stop crime? And the only <laughs> logical conclusion that follows is because the police officers are the criminals. That's why they're involved in organized crime. And that is what they are really scared of uh, actually revealing is that our police um, officers are agencies. Oops, Ramola just dropped out. Oh my. We're fine. Oh dear. Oh, Karen, I'm We're not fine. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. I could, uh, maybe I could read the flyer right now. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. Par because par that's pardon me. <laughs> I can't see unless I put it in my face. So, yeah, pardon me. One second. Maybe I can still share my screen. And I want to point everybody so that they, they can read it with you because okay. it's much more success, so effective because people can take it in. But I want you to read it. But let me just share my screen. And I want everybody to go to everydayconcern.net, go there right now. And on the front page, you have this article. And if you scroll down here yeah, after a few paragraphs, you, you can actually see the flyer. And uh, can people click on this? Uh, I can't click on it. Maybe if you open it in a new tab. I know it's still very small. So it would be great if you actually read it out. But okay. People can download it here. So um, go, Karen. Yeah. Ramola had to put it in as a screenshot because she was having trouble, but it is in the, I believe, the PDAF to uh, download it. All right. All right. She's, <laughs> she's back. But uh, yeah, you want me to continue and read the flyer? Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, as you said, it's, it has about three titles, one title, two subtitles, one attention, law enforcement, police and sheriff's deputies. Are you oath keepers or oath breakers? You struggle with getting respect from the public. You supposedly risk your lives to protect, uh, which you supposedly, jeez, sorry about that, guys, risk your lives to protect. You think it unfair, but you carry on. And some of you indeed lose your lives helping the public. You serve and protect the grateful as well as the ingrates alike. It's part of your job, equal protection under the law. What if I told you, however, that one set of people has every right to resent, even hate you? every right. One set of people has every right to view you as the enemy, as enablers of sheer evil and raw criminality, the likes of which the world has never seen before, largely because you sold out. What if I told you that your utter refusal to afford them equal protection under the law was not only unconstitutional and illegal, but inexcusably contemptible, depraved, and treasonous? Presumably the opposite of why you went into law enforcement. Hmm? Are you protectors or bullies? Choose. What if I told you that these certain people across the board report the same abuse from you no matter where in the country they are? They report being ignored, insulted, mocked, abused, and even set up to be committed or incarcerated when their only crime is reporting a crime, begging for help. Who told you that you were allowed to discriminate against certain people and just allow them to be viciously targeted for ongoing daily slander, harassing, stalking, and blacklisting campaigns by civilian vigilantes and subjected to ongoing vandalism, pet abuse, theft, murder, mutilation, computer hacking, phone hacking, postal mail and package tampering, and theft, home break-ins, ID theft, credit card theft, bank account theft, car vandalism, multiple car accident setups to destroy property and cause continued financial loss, as well as assaults by various cowardly means, such as gases, poisons, and new covert technology called electronic war weaponry, brought back from use in Iraq and Afghanistan and secretly turned on innocent Americans. Federal law 10 U.S. Code section 950T2 forbids attacking non-combatant civilians with weapons of war. Only a rogue criminal government would do that, meaning an illegitimate government operating contrary to its citizens' best interests. Are you okay with that? 
And second page goes on to say, do you know what, by what criteria these certain people are chosen for slander, torture, and extermination, and asset stripping? Here's a sampling. A, random, uh, i.e., wrong place, wrong time. B, vulnerable, such as single or widowed older women. C, journalists. D, constitutionalists. E, ex-spouses, lovers, or women who said no. Whistleblowers, truth tellers. Oh, it's F is whistleblowers and truth tellers. G, anyone an insider has a grudge against, imagined or real. H, veterans. I, the elderly. Do these sound like people who should be on the targeted, on the terrorist watch list? Well, they are. They are especially on the non-investigative subjects NIS code for silent kill list as specified by the dubious FBI and corroborated by an ACLU FOIA to them. Let that sink in. No investigation, just assassination. No due process, no Fourth Amendment rights. Ever hear of COINTELPRO? It was an illegal program run by the FBI to murder civil rights and women's rights leaders in the mid-20th century. The Senate Church Committee condemned it and forbade that the FBI ever war on the American people again. But they are at it again. They likely never stopped. But 9-11 was certainly a boon for them to expand and renew COINTELPRO. Do you have non-lethal weapons? Then you are familiar with the principles of electronic weapons. They do exist. You have some. Yet you are told to pretend such devices are mythical, make-believe, non-existent, and that a person is delusional or crazy to report being assaulted by people misusing them. Were you not warned that even non-lethal weapons can be lethal, especially if you abused and mis even if abused and misused? Not merely do you have and use these non-lethals and less lethals, you know the defense and Air Force contracts with big defense contractors are being run in your town, testing these directed energy weapons on Americans. You know that top secret, highly classified federal programs are being run in your city and country. Some of you have seen the fake terrorist watch list passed on to the CIA. So these Americans can be neuro-experimented on, covertly implanted, and tortured with voice to skull, a.k.a. also known as the voice of God weapon, the military so proudly revealed in Iraq, uh, remote electroshocks, and nervous system assault. These are the people you've been trained to call delusional. So no one will believe them when they report crimes against humanity being committed on their bodies and brains. 18 U.S. Code Section 2441 prohibits the federal government and agents thereof from committing acts of war upon unarmed non-combatant civilians. According to Executive Order 13606, all those who conduct or conspire to facilitate prohibited activities using sophisticated electronic technology to harm communications equipment, communications networks, or human beings are axes of evil, rogue state actors, or sympathizers of terrorist infiltrators working against the American people and public at large by the definition in Section 7 to include transmission and display. So, are those using, sorry, third page, information and communications technology to commit serious and grave human rights abuses in violation of the counter counterfeit access device fraud and computer uh, abuse act of 1984? Sorry, I misread that a little bit. Um, this defines electronic harassment, which can be lethal. If a person or several people aimed a radar gun or several at your home and family 24-7, would you allow that, knowing radar guns can cause cancer with overexposure? Yet, when civilians complain of being assaulted with demonstrably similar electronic devices by others, they are ignored? This is the legal definition of willful blindness doctrine the purposeful attempt to stay ignorant of pertinent facts to avoid civil and criminal liability. The crime fraud exception law may also be applicable in regard to the withholding of equal protection under the law to facilitate yet more human rights crimes by the perpetrators, quote unquote, I mean, parentheses, under color of law. These weapons, which we have established that law enforcement by and large knows about, cause cancer, bleeding in the brain, strokes, high blood pressure, internal and external burns, eye damage, 
hearing damage, brain damage, autoimmune disease, joint disease, organ failure, etc. 50 U.S. Code Chapter 40, Section 2301, Congressional Findings, clearly states that Congress recognizes that chemical, biological, radiological, and other electronic weapons of mass destruction are now capable of being made by domestic terrorists and criminals. So are you stupid or just cowardly hypocrites? So this is the only crime you refuse to deal with? You sanctioned this crime? Who told you that only one person stalking was against the law, but not premeditated multi-person stalking and harassment, so you could ignore all of these highly coordinated vicious crimes, no matter the harm to the victim? Did you know? 18 U.S. Code, Sections 241 and 242, prohibit conspiracy to deprive anyone of their constitutional rights. The first applies to civilians, the second to the author, to the authorities, you, who can indeed be liable, held liable, and prosecuted for failing to do their jobs. There are also RICO laws in, that apply, but law enforcement seems uninterested in this very unique crime, and some victims are even reporting being denied protection because their name is found on an untouchables list being kept by law enforcement outside normal file systems, such as in the tr car trunk of the duty officer, so that the illegal and treasonous kill lists will be out of public scrutiny. This is unconstitutional. There is no exception. This is prohibited by 42 U.S. Code 1985, conspiracy to interfere with civil rights, and 18 U.S. Code 1510, obstructing a criminal investigation, conflict of interest roles in government. In so doing, you are skirting the victim's ability to gather evidence for potential criminal actions against you. According to Supreme Court rulings Marbury v. Madison, no unconstitutional law is valid. According to Norton v. Shelby, following an unconstitutional law affords you no protection from liability and prosecution. Someone is telling your superiors to deny certain people their constitutional rights and ignore their persecution and murder by federally funded illegal death squads masquerading as Neighborhood Watch and other secret organizations like InfraGuard run by DHS, FBI, fusion centers, and paid tax dollars under the table by such contractors as Lockheed Martin. Your, boss, your bosses are even making deals to accept bribe money, fourth page, for, oh, sorry, accept bribe money for the department to get all the latest cop toys, and maybe even for themselves. By marginalizing innocent people, DHS needs to falsely and secretly accuse of criminality or terrorism in order to build up an un-American fascist police state on a fraudulent threat and on the destroyed lives of hundreds of thousands of innocent people who have no idea why they are suddenly a cast of people being denied their basic rights by law enforcement and illegally warred upon by their own government and fellow citizens using weapons of war like sophisticated gases, poisons, radiological weapons, and electronic weapons. 18 U.S. Code 2441, Section 2441, prohibits, prohibits the federal government and agents thereof from committing acts of war upon unarmed, non-combatant civilians, yet you do nothing. You do not investigate, you do not consult experts, you do not get educated. Did you know that the law, that law enforcement in many cases is actively engaged in repeated provocation and falsification of police reports at the behest of the FBI or fusion centers in order to protect the criminals and help frame their innocent victims? Did you know they are doing so partially to please DHS partners who own privatized prisons and mental institutions? Did you know that DHS is also registered as a private for profit business and is buying up s such entities? Clearly, they want the prisons and mental facilities filled to capacity and do not care how they do it. There is little difference in policing, in, oh, sorry, in little difference in policies to provoke lashing out or falsifying charges in order to arrest someone and outright kidnapping, is there? Is that what you want to be a part of? Can you tell the difference between law enforcement in a free society and the Gestapo tactics from Nazi Germany? 
Are you aware that American government has a history of illegally experimenting on people incarcerated in facilities, very often killing them? Prisoners have been injected against their will with everything from devastating diseases to plutonium. Are you aware that the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution prohibits cruel and unusual punishment? Do you realize that the terrorist watch list is purposely populated with hundreds of thousands of completely innocent Americans with no terrorist leanings or contacts, much less any criminal record, and that these are the scapegoats you are helping DHS, FBI, fusion centers, and their secret unconstitutional civilian armies persecute, torture, and murder for the profit of criminals within the federal government? You see, people on the watch list are declared non-humans and contracts are sold on them to use them for lethal experimentation the contracts are worth billions and then i put can you spell and i write out human trafficking did you go into law enforcement to help transition the, uh, the usa from a free country into one of subhuman totalitarian predator and prey society a dystopian nightmare where you are used to facilitate heinous human rights abuses against innocent citizens, including a large number of women and children, in order to aid and protect monstrous psychopaths, murderers, and pedophiles running abusive government. Do you have a don't care if it's right or wrong, just doing my job mentality? The early 21st century will be will be regarded as the dark ages of shameful law enforcement betrayal when it allowed hundreds of thousands of innocent people to be tortured and murdered under their noses. Now, are you an oath keeper and patriot who supports the principles upon which our country was founded? Or are you a thug for the new world order which has invaded, infiltrated, and usurped the U.S. government in order to commit genocide with your passive and active help. Are you the watchman who, excuse me, are the watchmen who fell asleep on the wall and allowed the USA to be destroyed from within? Demand that your bosses stand up to seditionist feds, such as the DHS, FBI, and fusion centers, and take back your, our country. Defend the Constitution. There is no such provision in the Constitution for an almost 20 year state of emergency where the Constitution can be suspended. Wake up. Refuse to sit back and allow crooked feds to torture and murder innocent people for profit in the biggest human rights and war crime scandal in the history of the USA, the terrorist watch list scam, which is enveloping more and more innocent people every day as you do nothing. Do you imagine you and your families are protected? No, you are not. When communism takes over a country, millions die. We are in the last stage of the end coup, just before the slaughter plans of the deep state DHS FBI fusion center are made public. Decide now to protect your country and your families, or just sit back and surrender to evil because you were simply never up to the job of protecting anyone. And then I, I sign it and then also give credit to Ramola and also to B. Clark and T. Wellens for uh, research into certain laws. And then at the end of it, I do give many um, links to articles that support what I'm saying in the letter. So that's it. Like I said, I get a bee in the bonnet and then I got to tell people off. That's fabulous, Karen. I mean, actually, I don't really deserve any credit whatsoever. I just helped with a little paragraph. Um, but you did all the hard work and just quoting and citing those laws. That's incredible. Because, you know, whatever the system is, monetary system, mercantile system, admiralty law, whatever, you know, there are still laws, right? There's still a code, and that's called the US code. And they're still breaking those codes, right? So it's important to bring that to their attention. It is. And there, you know, you cannot have a state of emergency forever. You can't do it. Plus, a state of emergency that's been declared has to be voted on and continued every six months by Congress. Guess how many times it's been voted on and continued since 9 11? Once. Oh. Once. How, how long do these emergencies supposedly last for, legally speaking? 
Well, you have you have to renew it. It's reviewed every six months. If you know, so Congress says yes, we're still in a state of emergency, but they they extended it once. They so really we are. It only once. I thought every time they had a U.S. president change hands, they kept extending it. No. Well, I I read that they essentially voted to extend it once, and they're then they're required to vote to extend it every six months that they want it extended, and they haven't. So that's that's one of the things that they have absolutely trampled and not um, done correctly. Yes, and then the question arises, of course, well, why would we need to be in a constant state of emergency, right? Well, they're supposed to pre present evidence that it's needed, that habeas corpus um, needs to be suspended and we need to be in a state of emergency. They have to present evidence, and that's what v Congress votes upon. But, you know, a very good point that you point out in the flyer is that some people's rights have been stripped from them. Not everybody's, right? Right, some exactly. Some rights have been completely taken away. No, new, no due process. Nothing from the Bill of Rights being, you know, pertaining to them. And uh, when stopped by police, police are told uh, when they consult their little black book or whatever, their terrorist watch list that they hide in the, in the trunk of their cars, um, the, the non-investigative kill list silent hit list etc then they come out and say well we are not going to touch this person because there's a federal program on this person this pro this person has drones attached to them you know it's just ridiculous i mean what do police know at all you know and i'm just i'm horrified by the total lack of education of police officers and most especially sheriff's department deputies they don't know a thing all they do is follow orders and it is unconscionable that these people would not have a basic understanding of the constitution unconscionable yes but you see that also brings up the question karen i mean to what extent are they truly in the dark and to what extent do some of them know and then that brings up the whole issue of you know the masonic network the secret societies who's really running our local police station mm -hmm. you know and how many no doubt there are good guys in the police. I'm not saying there aren't. But those good guys, so-called good guys, are they just sort of turning a blind eye and turning away when they are confronted with this scenario and information? Surely the entire country knows how things are working out right now on the ground. And, you know, I just, I can't explain it. I mean, when you have a police officer who goes into uh, this business, you would think that he wants to keep law and order. He wants to protect people from criminals, from bad guys. But where did they learn that anything goes if the person is federal? They're not supposed, supposed to report to federal. You know, they're supposed to report to their state. Their state is supposed to have any and all rights not delineated to the federal government by the Constitution. Anything not delineated to the federal government then belongs to the state. So how is it now that they're reporting to the, to, the fed, to the feds? And who is it in a state government who's allowing that um, line of, you know, uh, well, what is it called? It's, um, you know, basically just, you know, uh, uh, following orders from the feds with no, with no state intervention whatsoever. You know, I mean, the NSA can tell the police to go and slit your tires. What, you know, that's insane. That's totally insane. And you would think that a police officer would understand that that is insane. And it actually goes well beyond the feds as well, right? It goes beyond to that global policing initiative that Loretta Lynch signed into being in September 2015. The whole Smart Cities, Resilient Cities initiative that's all connected. So now we've got UN police. We've got global policing initiatives in our local police departments. And again, it takes away our sovereignty. You know, the states are acquiescing. They're giving up their rights. And, and again, is it that they don't understand the Constitution and the fact that they have rights and that the feds are not allowed to be into everything? The states are giving up their rights and also the local governments are giving up their rights. Mm -hmm. Right? The local governments are giving up their rights. So local police stations just sort of follow the lead. And then there's this whole, the whole um, construct of these fusion centers. Right? So that's another kind of overarching network that connects with DHS. And um, you've got the, for instance, over here in Massachusetts, you've got the Commonwealth Fusion Center and you have the Boston Fusion Center. 
and the Commonwealth Fusion Center is headed by the um, the, chief, the state police. So, and they most definitely are running this because, you know, on the ground, the way things work out on the ground, on our highways, in our neighborhoods, um, you have to, you have to presume that the police know what's going on, right? You have to, to, to some degree. I mean, like I said, you know, they've, they're either selling out or they're the stupidest people on the face of the earth, you know, and maybe it's a combination of both. But, you know, the fusion centers were designed to be private entities so that you could not give them Freedom of Information Act requests. So that's a very bad thing because that tells you they were planning to do unsavory things from the start. Can, can we can we stop calling it unsavory and just call it criminal? Yeah. <laughs> do criminal acts from the start yeah you know, yeah this, this is it this is actually the pivot point because what is happening to all countries around the world is that we are falling into the psychological uh effect of priming we got badged so just because you're shown a badge as i said last time it doesn't mean that you're dealing with a police officer it just means that somebody bought a 50 you know cents uh chinese manufactured little piece of plastic that has stuff on it and it's just showing it in your face. That's all it says. It doesn't mean that they have a forensic department. It doesn't mean that they have ever the intention of helping you. And, um, you know, I, all these things are unsaid and people just try to, um, you know, um, uh, I don't know, they, they try to navigate through life making assumptions. And that's a very human thing to do. But criminals and psychopaths can just use our innate assumptions and really make a lot of money and have massive business plans. And I think this is what we're seeing. So, ah, there's Millicent. And, um, you know, everything that you were saying is, um, it is such a global problem. Hi, Millicent. Um, it's actually such a massive global um, problem. And in every single country, we see exactly the same thing happening. So it's not just the US, it's every country in Europe. And what we're seeing is we are seeing police officers behaving criminally criminally so uh we have to assume that it's the police officers who are the criminals they are our problem you know and it is the people who do the gang stalking as in the national surveillance network run by the intelligence agencies who are our problem you know they are the criminals and um this is very typical for deep capture and it's actually the normal way for country to be subverted you know that is the quickest and fastest way and this is how the banking uh, crime cartel has done it for absolutely centuries and centuries. But what we're seeing, so in, in your flyer, Karen, you were pointing to the fact that there are some people who were stripped of their rights and other people seem to do fine. I would say the people who seem to do fine haven't been attacked yet to see how they don't have any rights when the, once the crime cartel... Actually, wants I, should, I should actually, you know, revise what I had stated. They don't have rights either. I mean, I think certain people are indeed being targeted, as Karen points out, for complete stripping of rights. But the other people are being kind of corralled and suppressed and terrorized around the targets and neighborhoods, you know, around the scapegoat targets targets and neighborhoods. So literally, they are under the thumb of the fusion centers. The FBI can come into neighborhoods, can sit in somebody's fr front room with a little, you know, gadget and track your neighbor. You know, that's what's going on. I see that happening over here. So because these people have a badge, the FBI have badges, the police have badges, right? They are badging the neighbors. And they're also getting the neighbors to engage in noise harassment. Now, that kind of thing will not happen unless the neighbors recognize, quote unquote, the authority, quote unquote, of these jokers with badges. So mm. when they're told to jump, they jump. You know, when they're told to, to run outside and make a heck of a racket, they run out and do it. They're doing it all the time over here in my neighborhood. You know, and I think many of us have witnessed and see this all the time. And, and, and that's actually the, the standard way of doing it, because um, so I would the way I would classify it is that there are people who are now being exterminated actively, and I'm one of them, and then you are one of them. Um, and there are people who are not being exterminated yet because they still have a function in the system to exterminate others before it's their turn. That's right. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like a wave motion. And actually, there are already victim cases where they say, oh, there was a perp flat from where I was being attacked when I, I moved in. And then the perp died of brain cancer. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the wall where he's reflecting, you're getting 50 percent, he gets 50 percent and the moron didn't know it. Um, so that's happening. And then they also want to do away with the people, you know, with the witnesses 
because if you really want to have a genocide, you best do it in cycles and waves. So you kill off the first wave and the people pointing guns will be the next being killed off. And then you've got this outward moving concentric circle. And then you populate the empty flats with your Masonic or, you know, secret society crime network members. And then they get all these cheap flats. So that's exactly, exactly the program that the Masons uh, ran in Nazi Germany and also in communist Russia, exactly the same. And there's a, um, a wonderful little uh, local museum in the Czech Republic. Um, and I think it's, uh, I have to remember the town, it's somewhere near the, the border, but in, in there, they had, a, so the area used to be uh, German speaking. And if you go to the museum and you read the documents from the Second World War, yeah. I can read them because they were in German. And one of them, one of the exhibits there is a letter sent by a soldier to the local authority complaining, and I will just use the term as it's written in the letter, complaining why, uh, while he was away at the front, you know, fighting for Nazi Germany, they were distributing Jew houses for free. And he comes back and he says, why did I not get a Jew house? And then there's a the reply, and this is how it's written in the text, you know, a uh, Judenhaus, this is what he said. He said, you were distributing Judenhäuser, why didn't I get one? And I'm fighting for you at the front. And then the local council wrote him a very apologetic letter and said, oh, we're really sorry. You fell off the list because you were at the front. Of course, you're going to get a Jew house. Sure. We've just killed a family. Move in. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. And that is that is no joke. And it's happened everywhere, everywhere. I mean, George Soros was instrumental selling out the Jews in Budapest, right? He's a Jew. He sold the other Jews. And that shows you it's nothing to do with being Jew or not Jew. It's really to do with are you being paid by the crime cartel and are you a big fat, big fat psycho, you know? And psychos are universal in every um, every part. So, but what did they do in, in Budapest? And you can still see these massive, wonderfully luxurious, beautifully done houses that are empty because they got, killed so many people, there weren't enough masons to fill it up, you know? It's, it's all visible. And there, there were entire ghost quarters in Budapest, absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful places. So what this is, is the same old program. And um, it is called the dual state. And it's a very, very old asset stripping program. And here's, for example, a very good book, The Dual State by Ernst Frankel, which explains the entire Nazi um, Germany aspect of it. Um, but the other thing that I would like to point to in very quick sequence is that um, this is also um, talking about the police. If people go and listen to the testimony of John Wedger at the International Tribunal for Natural Justice, he will talk about how he was trying to stop the, um, the child trafficking in Britain, and he was stopped by a police chief called Hogan Ho, who in the end was promoted up and became very, very, very rich. So, um, this is Inspector Hogan Ho. Let me just show you his face. Okay, Bernard Hogan Ho. And he's famous in Britain for having brought forward the theory, the, the broken window theory. This is what he was promoting. As in, if there's an area where there's some broken windows because some, you know, thugs have vandalized it, you have to uh, you have to go after the smallest problems and really sort it out when you have a neighborhood. Sounds great as a theory. But then it's also instrumental in asset stripping poor neighborhoods. And it's also instrumental if you really want to fill up private prisons, you know, if you go after every little nonsense. But now watch this. So John Wedger is on record for Bernard Hogan Ho saying to his face, you will shut your fucking mouth and not say a word about this stuff that you've uncovered. In other words, Bernard Hogan Ho with the Masonic, you can see him with the Masonic cap. You know, no big fat surprise once the Masonic tiling is on his cap that he's following the program. He said, you will shut your mouth. And in a sense, he made the choice. The children had no rights. Okay. And children fucking politicians had all the rights in the country. And I want to make it as stark as possible. This is why I'm using the word, because this is what they did. They shredded children. They murdered them. They raped them. And there's this police officer saying to a police officer who tries to help the children, you will shut your fucking mouth. Well, what happened to this police officer who said that? Well, he got very, very rich. And look at this, because this is very telling. Already the times in the signaling in this image shows you what's behind all this, because they're showing Switzerland with the Matterhorn. The pyramid is right there, top of the pyramid. There's Hogan Ho with his Masonic tiling on his cap. 
And what happened is that this Scotland Yard chief, um, he is Britain's former top policeman whose six year tenure as Met Commissioner was marred by controversies, including the failed inquiry into VIP sex abuse. And he has now a public pension pot worth at least six million. And where does he go? He goes to Switzerland. And he's in a little alpine retreat for war criminals called Valais in Switzerland. What coincidence. What coincidence. And this is super important because this is how this whole system ties together. This is how the dual state is done. There's money which is run by the criminal networks of the central banks, which are printing money, and they are subverting every police station in the world using the Masonic networks here. And then they're paying off their insiders. And these insiders are instrumental in either killing people directly or covering up the killing, but making sure that it's not stopped. And this is the pattern to look for. And this is why you have the Masonic uh, handshake on the police, what's it called, the, the fraternity of police officers or something in the US with the satanic pentagram. That is these people. And um, when you trace it down, you, you're right, ladies, that it's a UN program. Let's remember that the UN logo is a crosshair. So targeting, global targeting for harvesting. That's what it is. They are telling us right there. And this harvesting symbol fits in. Let me show you the flag of communist Romania, where I was born and I fled from. Communist Romania had this little logo on the colors, which again showed the satanic pentagram, the sun worship, the sun, just like the Jesuits, the Vatican connection. Okay. And then it had the corn here. So the wheat, whatever this is for harvesting. In other words, communist Romania was being harvested by Satanists working for the Vatican. That's what it was. There was the program right there. And that's what we're now. We are now in global targeting. The, the entire world is the, in the crosshairs of these United Nazis for harvesting. And men like Hogan Ho really cream it up, you know, cream it off. And then they go back to the mothership, which is Switzerland. And um, it's just shocking. And I just expect exactly the same thing to happen. Maybe, you know, going to Switzerland is a bit too far for police officers. But these infraguard people are the Hogan massive hoes of the U.S. who are selling out, prostituting themselves and, and literally making sure that people are dying, that children are being raped and murdered and people are being machine gunned in their homes and they do nothing. They are criminals. They are members of a criminal, criminal network. They are. They're trading their neighbors' lives for um, handbags and uh, riding lawnmowers and maybe a vacation house, and they think nothing of it. Yeah. And, and yeah. all I can say to these people is that um, you guys are in for the next kill because the way the mafia cartel works, this is a very, very old game. You know, there are books written about this from a long time ago, and the cartel signaling spells it out all the way back to Roman times. It's the same program. And it's hugely successful. Um, actually, it was um, Christopher Story, the guy who wrote the new Underworld Order, and he gave a talk. And he, when he's talking about the satanic um, element in the communist uh, in, in communist Russia, he says the word revolution shows the program. It's it's revolving. It's like a circle. It goes around in circles. So any revolution takes the current rich people who got rich off the cartel, asset strips them, puts new people in, and this whole wheel keeps turning like that. And at every turn, the minions get money and the big banking crime cartel families get even more money. So, and this is how it's rolling through, um, through the entire countries of, of the world. But it's a no, revolution. It's just that cycle. Yeah, it's basically parasites moving on to one society, uh, sucking them dry. And then when it's about to die, they move on to another country. Exactly. And they left my country communist, uh, so previously it wasn't communist, um, my country of Transylvania exactly like that, like a, like a horde of locusts had just passed. It's now withering. This is what they did to Russia. This is what they did to China, um, to Latin America, absolutely Africa, everywhere around the world. And now we're down to, are we going to stop them? Or are we not going to, you know, this is, this is it. And, um, the way I can, I can really, and, and I think that once you understand the program, you understand what to do to stop it. This is what I think. 
And the program work, works like that. It's top down. The pattern comes from top down. You know, it's using the Masonic secret service, any sort of male networking networks, you know, to brainwash these people, organize them and make them work like a machine. But it goes all the way down to the lowest level. So when you were bringing up the smart cities, um, Ramola, I would just want to point out the smart smart means AI enabled. And so I think they also use the term AI. strong, strong cities network. Oh, yes, exactly. Yes, there's a smart city, strong cities, and then they also like to use sustainable. And if you yeah. do these replacements everywhere where it says smart, like your smartphone is already long AI enabled. They did data an analytics. That's just, you know, that's going straight to AI. So our AI phones, you know, but when you have these smart, replace smart with AI, replace sustainable with genocide, you know, and strong probably means, you know, really strong, intensive genocide, you know, happening right now, right now, strongholds, Illuminati strongholds. And um, this is how it's done. So when we go down to the local level, for example, I'm about to write to all of my neighbors because these neighbors are machine gunning into my head incessantly. They have not reacted to the cease and desist. So the next step is to invite them to court for the war crimes tribunals personally. So I'm going to write the letter and every single neighbor will get a personal letter and I'll say, you are a prime suspect. I have got reasonable evidence to think you are involved in this. And for those who had, you know, were kind enough to put up satanic goats and satanic uh, signaling, you know, they have got a, the, an express ticket. But um, just one thing I wanted to say while, while we're talking about police and neighbors. Um, so last time I mentioned that uh, Siegfried Thomas and I, we went to the police station and the police have re since refused to actually get in touch with uh, Siegfried Thomas. They refused to actually interview uh, a witness. Um, I went to the police station again. Again, the police officers weren't there, but I was assured that eventually they'll get in touch with me while well, they haven't for two and a half years. But anyway, the next time I'm going to the police station, I, I'm giving them a court invite or co conspirators of crime against humanity. So my neighbors and my local police station will get that. But as I was going around and, you know, again, reminding me of the precise spelling of the names, I also noticed the cartel signaling on the doors of the people who are involved. So one of the things I would like to say to the community, this is super urgent because as soon as we announce it on techno, maybe people will take off the, the decoration, but go around all your neighbors and photograph the front door. And if their cars parked outside, photograph it if, it if they've got anything in the back window or hanging off the back view mirror. Because I found in pretty much 100% of the cases that the people who were involved had cartel signaling. So they're very, very subtle signs. So please photograph what's hanging there if anything is hanging, what's in the back uh, window. And I don't mean just, oh, there's a jumper, you know, with some baseball team. That's not what I mean. Uh, but baseball caps are relevant sometimes, you know, this sort of merchandise. Stuff that's in the back window all the time as the car's cruising around the town. Because those are recognition symbols of uh, an organized crime network. And for example, when I went around, I discovered that the houses that she seemed to be shooting at me had little reefs, just like Siegfried Thomas, and big hearts, you know, the heart symbol, but also butterflies and an owl. The owl is a symbol for the crime cartel because owls hunt in darkness. So I just wanted to underline everything you said. You know, I think people should go distribute the flyers, really give the police station hell because they are members of a criminal network. And then we now have to move to identify the neighbors who are members of this criminal network because they will kill not just you and your family. When they're finished with you, they will kill other people and then each other. That's the plan. Yeah, but also remember that people who are working in our neighborhoods are really minions and proxies. There are much larger thugs over here who are involved, you know, and they are in the institutions. Um, I just wanted to say hi to Millicent because she's been dropped off three times. I've been trying to promote her to panelist each time. It's very bizarre what's been happening because you're a panelist, um, Millicent, and I've promoted you the first time. But then it kept dropping back to attendee status. And this is not obviously us doing this. Absolutely. In fact, my tablet is being literally cut off altogether and restarted and I'm not doing a thing. So I started taking pictures of it, just restarting by itself. And I do have something very interesting to, um, to add. I've been out this morning doing some research on what I think will, 
will certainly lead to proof of involuntary servitude of not just me, but of, of our, I was telling you, you all about the STEM program in, the, in my hometown. It's now joined a global and an international community. Considering that I'm supposed to be a, a global research subject, did all of this start around me? Was I used to bring the STEM system to Mount Pleasant? That's really uh, interesting, Millicent. You have to tell us more. So the STEM program, we understand, is connected to NASA and connected to the DOD, right? And it's yeah. running the science programs in schools. Um, and you're discovering that now there is a global connection? Correct. Wow. And I, so, I just would like to say, for me, it's always the brain STEM program. So STEM yeah, right. Oh, very STEM good point. Oh, Thank you, Kathy. Technology, engineering, and maths. Is that right? Right. And now they've added the arts. Oh, yes. STEAM, the STEAM program. But it's after you yeah. exposed them, Melissa. They added the A after you exposed them. You know? STEM to STEAM. <laughs> and you know, the global aspect certainly connects up with the policing because the, the Strong Cities Network is a connection of the police in cities and counties in the US to the UN and abroad. And you know, the key over there is the countering violent extremism programs and countering violent extremism is a huge program, which they are now having conferences in Europe regularly. There was one in May, I think, at the end of June, um, in May or, or at the end of June, um, about you know people getting together and saying, how shall we counter violent extremism in our neighborhoods? You know, I, I think, uh, sorry, I mean, for, uh, for all the panelists here, it's pretty obvious, but just for the new viewers who joined us fresh, I think, you know, in the crime cartels double speak with extremists, they mean us, the people who don't want to go, go along with the genocide agenda. Yes. What these meetings are about is how to mutilate us harder and mm -hmm. even more covertly so that we die before we go up against their money making. Scheme. But they have a little facade operation going, you see, and the facade operation is the war on terror. And as we all know, from a sort of a generic uh, foreign policy kind of point of view, a long picture, large picture, panoramic picture point of view, what's going on is you've got the intelligence agencies and the secret agencies setting up wars all around the world, right? Fomenting wars setting people up one against the other, setting up factions, creating rebels, creating guerrilla warfare, etc. here and there, uh, creating factions like Al-Qaeda, like ISIS, etc. and so on. And, and then, like the target programs, like, like the target programs, we are a small wars. Yeah. And the person who set me up for this just happened to have a medal in war on terror. How about that? Well, yes, because you're being uh, named a terrorist. Uh, we're all being named terrorists, you see, and this is how we get on the watch list. So they take accomplished people, people who speak out, people who have morality, people who have integrity, courage and spine in their own individual neighborhoods, people who come to the attention of the local criminals who are the pipeline to the vaster, larger organized crime network composed of skull and boners and masons and other moronic uh, lunatics of this nature. So once you come to the attention of a criminal, then you get put on a watch list. And then the function of the police, which used to be to take care of communities, then gets turned viciously against you. Yeah. Where now you are seen as a terrorist and a violent extremist. Although, mm -hmm. like me, perhaps, you know nothing about guns or violence. But, um, you know, you express your mind vociferously and unequivocally, as I certainly do. And then you get, li get listed as a troublemaker. So you're known as a troublemaker in the community. Mm -hmm. While being an outstanding community member, you're known as a troublemaker by the criminals. So that, uh, that, that, at that point, Catherine, I take your point very clearly. We must call them criminals. It is only criminals who can turn around and call people like us terrorists, extremists, and problematic. The first person that broached that subject of troublemaker to me was my therapist in 2001. And that was probably right after I saw this man come into her office as I was leaving, carrying what looked like a stingray. And what did she say? After she said to me, how does it feel to be labeled a troublemaker? And I didn't know what she was talking about. I had never heard that term before. Did she elaborate on that? Because clearly she, she had not. some insider info there. 
if she was letting people with stingrays into her office? Well, the only other thing she suggested at one point was that uh, Arnold Air Force Base might pay for me to get a PhD as a clinical psychologist. Wow. Wow. And Catherine, when you mentioned SMART, remember I've shared before when I took my youngest daughter who just suddenly began having what looked like eczema to a, a dermatologist at Vanderbilt? His first comments to me was, she's smart, isn't she? And I believe he meant a smart chip, not just that she was highly intelligent or had a high IQ. And I said, yeah. He said, well, I know the children that I see that are smart usually get asthma or eczema. Wow. Yes, I think you're right on the money there. Because I have discovered that what these people, this criminal network is running, uh, these criminals are in the in the hospitals and everywhere and they have got their own internal language gangster talk you know codified gang and this is exactly what they mean you know she's got the smart chip and then as they are probably you know beaming her and so on and probably she has some nanotech because there's a lot of skin disease you know or it's not skin disease it's the you know the consequences of stuff being put into your skin that's synthetic well, actually, it also becomes the consequences of voice to skull because it travels through the skin to the brain. Mm -hmm. I have the unclassified document that describes it's called microwave heating, but then mm -hmm. microwave hearing goes with it. Yeah. Um, it. When she was five months old, I, I ended up sort of being forced to take her to Vanderbilt to get treatment for what looked like an asthma attack. They gave oh. her a shot, and I think they probably gave her a smart chip. She didn't have another asthma attack until she was two years old. And after that, she didn't have another one until she was in 10th grade at high school. Wow. Yes. Now, yeah. and she didn't have, we didn't have, I don't think I had a nebulizer in the house. I'm sure I didn't. But the other part to that is when she was about 10 years old, nine or 10 years old, I took her to a dermatologist at Meharry um, Medical College, which is, an all black college. Uh, it's a historical black university actually. And the dermatologist that I saw s looked at me very solemnly and said, she's being heated under her skin. Now, how does someone be heated under their skin except by microwave heating? And that's a deliberate act. Um, later, years later, I looked him up on the internet and found out that he actually had been in the Navy. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So he actually was giving you a bit of disclosure right there. And then talking about, you know, under dermal or subdural heating, he's also talking about some kind of thin film technology, some kind of bio mammals or nanotech that's been inserted under the skin. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. That's horrifying. You know, I wanted to mention with, re with reference to that violent extremism concept, which is, which continues to be used as a cover and facade operation to target people. Um, that by that means they are using dual use technologies, you know, and that's what the DOD and DOJ memo, memorandum of understanding in 1994 was all about when both the, when the DOJ, which is the FBI and police decided to work together with the DOD to develop classified non-lethal weapons for dual use, meaning for surveillance use as well and and police use as well as military use. So in other words, they wouldn't just be using it on the battlefield outside the country, they would be using it on battlefields inside the country through the police force, dual use technologies. There we can see, I think the cartels double speak again, the criminal networks double speak. And also dual use can mean it, it is uh, surveying you and it's killing you, you know? Mm -hmm. It is. And as we saw from that video last week, um, Catherine, the, um, the incredible disclosure video from this military neuroscientist, James Giordano, who's got the guts to call himself a neuroethicist as well. One of the things he said is, we are looking at individuals. We're interested in certain individuals. They are targeting individuals. They are targeting certain individuals and they are looking into their brains is pretty much what he said. And he kind of took ownership of it. He, he even said my neurant, you know, so as if uh, he was the one running the whole show. Perhaps he is. He and I'm so are. glad he did. He just calls <laughs> himself an express, you know, a ticket to the, the biggest uh, war crime tribunals in the history. Oh, he, he, he just got himself front seat, most definitely. And yeah. actually, 
you know, if I've got it up, I think I had it up a little while ago. There is another video that everyone should watch. I tweeted it out. Let me share my screen over here and um, show you That's the other video time. as well. But, uh, you know, I have to say, I'm, I, I get so angry when I'm, watching, when I'm watching these guys. There are other people in the UK as well who, who we should put on the list next time. Um, mm -hmm. But when we are watching this, we should always think, how, do we, how, we're, how are we going to secure convictions for these people so that they spend the rest of their days behind bars or ideally they end up dead by lawful means? This is really what we have to think about. Yeah, we have to stop this. Now, you see, this is the thing that people don't get. The reason we are doing this week after week and speaking out, the reason other people are speaking out, you know, people like Dr. Eric Hallstrom and FBI whistleblower Gerald Sosby, CIA whistleblower Barbara Hartwell, we are all speaking out because we hope to be able to stop this lunacy because it is indeed lunacy and is, it is being wreaked on everybody. It is intended for all of humanity, as we can see very clearly. So this, by the way, here is the video. It is called Predictive Neuroscience, Facts, Fictions and Fears of Scanning Brains and Reading Minds. It's from 2013. It's from a little while ago and I've watched it, you know, and I've used some of this for my article, some of the disclosure and info from it from, um, for my articles. What he's... Um, talking about is how neurosurveillance is being studied. Actually, I think it's been rolled out. I think it's already in action. But he talks about different means of interrogating the human mind, um, neuro uh, interrogation, neuro imaging. And he says there are many, many ways in which we can, um, you know, read the mind. So let me just play a little, see if you can hear it. Romola, we can't hear him clearly. At least I can't. Oh, you can't hear. Oh, no, sorry he's about that. too too low. Too low. Any better? Slightly. This is full volume. Oh, oh dear. Turn on the television without seeing images. Type I'm about to show you. I want to cut through some of the hype that goes with this. What I also refer to as neuro hype or neuro loud. Let me try to show some of his images, actually. That might and help. Those perhaps that we may develop, not on the public, on the public. Actually, Just look at how smug he is. This is what really annoys me, that these criminals are in our face. And they think that what they're doing is fair enough. It really isn't. It's a war crime. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it doesn't look like I'm able to play this very well. But um, you can, I'll just show you a couple of slides, maybe. Like, check this out. These are the different kinds of um, imaging technologies that they've got these days to assess. So, you know, there, as we saw from that previous video, their whole intention with weaponized neuroscience is to, ass to access, no, assess, access, and um, target. Uh, in other words, you know, modify. So words, attack, brain mutilate, brain, brain, mutilate brain degrade, brain damage. Mm -hmm. So literally, these are indeed brain damage weapons. These are brain retardation weapons. These are brain assault weapons. You know, and this is how they start with what looks like medical equipment, right? Computerized tomography, positron emission tomography, single photon emission, computerized tomography, magnetic resonance imaging, MRIs, functional mag magnetic resonance imaging, diffusion tensor imaging. It all looks highly innocuous, um, except it's not. So, <laughs> And Ramola, you have to remember that in talking about dual use experimentation, the medical piece is often done at university medical centers. That is a very good point. So in other words, what we are, what you are saying is that our university medical centers, which are so well equipped uh, and so well funded, I should say, by the military at this point in time, become the labs, right, where weaponized neuroscience is indeed playing out. 
Absolutely. In addition to their own labs, I'm sure they've got their own as well, but they've got these as well. They're using everything. But well, remember, it's not just the DOD, it's the National Science Foundation, it's the um, National Institute of Health. Mm -hmm. So they're funded from multiple venues. Mm -hmm. And just as you know, you know, it's just like most technologies, I think, as you can you make you as you can use it for good, you can also use it for ill. And we are seeing both sides of that. We've got the public face of it, you know, for beneficial uses, and then you've got the dark face of it. Um, for instance, neurogenomics genetics, which identifies sequences, targets genetic sequences in disorders, um, and predicts structure and function. And obviously, in terms of weaponized neuroscience, it is targeting those genetic se sequences in order to use them for deceit purposes, to incur um, disease burden or morbidity, mortality, you know, and that's um, the horror and the frightfulness of what's going on. This is a very sort of random uh, going through some of um, this, uh, this guy's slides over here. Um, but I highly suggest that everybody watch this because it will give you an idea as to what um, justice is looking at, because they are doing this for neuropolicing and neurosurveillance. And um, as many of us know, this is already going on. And this is where targets come into play. Certain people have been targeted for brain invasion of this fashion. Brain mutilation, brain mutilation. Because, um, you know, these people, they make it sound very snuzzy, but what it actually looks like in, in practice is that you have scumbags like him, absolutely, you know, sick, psychopathic war criminals, especially that this talk, you know, kind of looks civil, but the, the previous one was just revolting, who thinks that if he just gives a talk, he can make it look kind of normal and acceptable just because he wears a suit. That is not the case. We have these rampant brain mutilations, and you've got these utter, perverted, disgusting, degenerate men, mostly, but a lot of women as well. But most of the time, it's these men in male networks going out, and what they're doing is they are just grabbing women, they are pulling them in, they're getting off on torturing them as much as they can, they're machine gunning their vagina, they read out the brain signal as if any sort of science would need you know, what it exactly looks like in terms of uh, brain signals when a woman's vagina is mutilated live and they keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And it's sort of experimentation. It's just psychopathic, degenerate males really getting off on it. And then and I should point out to, to anybody who's listening at this point that what Catherine is really speaking about is trauma-based mind control, which used to be very bad words that came out of MKUltra in the 70s, but now oh. appear to have become everyday usage in the military and intelligence world. And they are, from all accounts, from whistleblowers and scientists, they are running trauma-based mind control, so-called experiments. They certainly seem like operations, as you, as you often point out, Catherine. Um, they're running these experiments. They are neuro experiments. So in other words, they're attempting to map neural networks. They're attempting to figure out how each neuron behaves how every network is, you know, going to behave in a certain way, in a predictive way, so that they can then go in and change the way those networks behave. They can go and lobotomize and take over. And apparently, apparently, this, this use of trauma, extreme trauma, extreme pain, is part of this bizarre scenario where they think they can hit people, both externally and internally, you know, with directed energy weapons, um, radiation assault them to bits and then completely take over their brain patterns in this fashion. See, I, I know what, Mala, this week I had a couple of treatments that is designed to heal the brain among other things. Mm -hmm. And the first day after the first treatment, I had the biggest headache I have ever had all the rest of the day. He had said to me that he planned to undo whatever good I got out of the treatment. Yesterday, the amount of oxygen that I was receiving got hacked and I wasn't getting the full measure. So it's, yeah, they are definitely wanting to keep our brains at a state, in a state of uh, compromise for certain. That is absolutely criminal. You know, in your case, Mellison, since we know who the perpetrator is, we know that this Randall is a guy. Webster. His name is Randall Webster, everybody. Air Force veteran, Randall Webster. 
He's got access to BCI technologies. He's got access to a satellite and he is able to direct microwave pulse weapons directly at you and give you massive migraines and headaches whenever he wants. He's able to send radio frequency ch uh, signals to chips in your body and in your brain. So this is actually the, the point I wanted to make also earlier was, you know, the kind of what we are seeing in James Giordano and what we're seeing in weaponized neuroscience from the military is the lack of any kind of limit, you know? So you've got a military that's decided they're never going to limit themselves. They're not going to stop. They're never going to apply the brakes, never. If there's something that can be done, they're going to do it, you know? So this is why we've got this extreme weaponized neuroscience where literally the brain can be taken over. People can be bi-robotized. People can be completely taken over to the extent of their arms and limbs being taken over, you know, the motor and sensory cortex is being taken over. But if, can, you know what, one of the things that I'm really, um, I want to rip absolutely to shreds because I think this is also one of the pillars that these are like, you know, Giordano and his entire research grant is based on. He puts a suit on, gives a little crappy talk, putting up these things and rattles through what they're doing. What he's doing is advertising for another bunch of perverts, what they can do to get the subscriptions in. I'm convinced of this because what I see on the ground has nothing to do with research. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. It has nothing to do with what? With research or human experimentation anymore because so at my end, I'm getting all the victim reports. And as you know, I had to put together this affidavit template, trying to go through everything that's happening to the victims so that they have a box to tick. And one of the things I can say on the ground, having been, you know, I've worked in research for over a decade, right? i have really cutting edge research. What I'm seeing on the ground done by the militaries has nothing, nothing to do with experimentation anymore. What it has to do is with, with a bunch of so utterly degenerated men going out and they do not know how the hell to get off anymore. They are doing everything. They are just like pedophiles. And it's known from pedophile rings that they want to have harder and harder offenses to just keep getting off. It's an addiction. And that's what I'm seeing. We have all Can these men using like fancy military technology and oh, all this like, you know, ear chips and entire intercom system. And what do they talk about? Their dick. Wow. Is that research? No, it's not. We've got Randall Webster talking for hours in Millicent's head about other women's vaginas. Is that research? No, it's just some sad fuck who needs to be shot in the head lawfully because he's sick and the Air Force doesn't stop him. They are churning these people out. It's human sex trafficking. That's all it is. It's just a I was wanting to add something to what you're saying about... Uh, the, the use of the weapons and the addiction to them. Lynn Sagala wrote in 2005, and Lynn Sagala was, is the past president of the United States Psychotronics Association. And what she wrote in that document was, it is no longer experimentation. It is slow kill. Yeah. Exactly. The words that I heard in March of 2008 uh, from the voice that I have described in the past using military communication technology said to me, I'm going to be as, take it as slowly as I can. Exactly. Yeah. And we've got four years room. later, I was told by that same voice using military communication technology, you've made me filthy rich. I've made a mint selling your body. Exactly. And that falls on the secretary of the air force. I'm sorry. The incumbent is a woman. And her name is Heather Wilson. So maybe she needs a letter. Okay. You know? she, needs court yeah. charges. she needs court charges, all of them. Well, a warning letter first to let her understand what's going on. And then if there's no reaction as is typical, then yes. Yeah. I, I would just say, you know, this is the final warning. Um, you know, you will be charged in two weeks time. You've got two weeks to respond to this. Um, we will literally hunt you until we have lawfully put you to death. That's that would be my letter, but you know, clearly don't write it like that. That's probably not Millicent style. <laughs> not Millicent style exactly. <laughs> but this is what I'm gonna write to these people because um I also find it very telling that in the US they put Gina Haspel, a, a psychopathic degenerate, and uh, very likely a serial killer, because I don't think anybody gets to that post without having killed at least one child or two. 
um, you know, they put Gina Haspel there. And in meanwhile, the Swiss have changed Markus Seiler to a military man who continued this Nazi mutilation and murder program. And I think they put in a military man because to kill all the Swiss, there will be military action required. Eventually, the Swiss will cotton on. And when they try fighting back, this guy, uh, Jean-Philippe Godin, as a military guy, will be used to turn the military on the Swiss people because they will not acquiesce to their own genocide. There are only 8 million Swiss within the country, and they want to kill a third. So, you know, this is, this is it. And, and I just want to say to all the people in Unter Engstringen that, who were kind enough to call the police station, keep calling, keep calling, because, yes, you are on the list too. Every third person in my neighborhood is going to die. And I don't think the cartel wants to have these jokers with the wreaths on the front door. I think they will be, you know, I'll be number one, they'll be number two, and then whoever's, you know, unaffected further up the hill probably will be fine. You know. And you know what Melison's pointing to is also the fact, something that I think, well, Mitch Mattis has discovered this, we've talked about this before, Karen knows about this and she talks about this, there are private contracts being taken out on people as well, right? So the fusion centers are actually approving surveillance contracts. So people are being told, and this is something Diane Chandler is also telling me about, and I, you know, I'm going to be revealing her story shortly, and it's bombshell. Uh, it's pretty much about private contracts being taken out on women, uh, literally sex trafficking women into torture clubs, you know, permitting men to, to, um, to imagine that they can pay and uh, watch a woman being tortured electromagnetically with remote electromagnetic weapons and uh, with through wall radar, through wall surveillance, audio video surveillance, they can watch, you know, like a snuff video, they can watch what's going on. So this kind of extreme corruption and extreme violence this has set in. And how could this set in in any society unless there were, there were gates and doors to permit it? And it appears that the fusion centers are a starting point there. They have opened the gateway to extreme criminality where yeah. people can do this. You know, so not only are there weapons testing pro, um, contracts being taken out on people who are wrongfully put under surveillance and thrown into the massive inflation watch list scams, but, and, you know, which really means that defense contractors like General Dynamics, Raytheon, they're making big bucks, Northrop Grumman, by just being able to operate their planes in our cities and counties and test their directed energy weapons on, on the populace. Um, but you also have local thugs, you know, the ones who fail GED, who are like the kids in the class who never paid attention, who are uh, really struggling now to stay afloat. And of course, all our economies have been crashed, right? We're not manufacturing economies anymore. So there's a lot of people desperate for money. And here we've got the surveillance industry suddenly bloating out of sight and offering them the opportunity to work at home to be their own boss and work at home okay. with a little portable energy weapon that they can direct at their neighbor's cat and finish off okay. or their neighbor's, you know, grandfather and finish off, okay. etc. And Thank this you. is what's going on as well. And, and I'm so, you know what, uh, this is why, uh, sorry, I have to, ex ex you know, apologize for my language, but I'm so angry because I just, I, I'm, I keep getting flooded by the most, I'm not, I'm not upset about being flooded, I'm upset about what's being done to people because I'm, I've just got, you know, folders and folders full of just the most horrific abuse and it's absolutely not research. What I can see over and over is a bunch of really dirty old men getting off and there are no stops. It is state-sanctioned male masturbation. These are little male masturbation pods known as the air fast or the NS frickin' A, but this is all they are. They are nothing. And, you know, last time I wanted to point out, have a good look at this guy, Hayden, and all these people. Look at these little, you know, twerps. Do you think they're good for anything? I mean, they just make me laugh as a woman, just looking at them. And they should be so great that they should be the head of both the CIA and the NSA. I mean, what the hell happened? And what happened is that the crime cartel that's controlling it, it's, they are laughing in our faces. And they say to a country like the US, you've got 350 million people, and we're going to put this little twerp on top. Go and eat it up, right? You have to obey him, and he will run the local crime cartel, the Crown Corporation in America. I mean, no way is a country of 350 people, and, and the only thing that they could produce was Michael Hayden, 
who can't even just reprogram his the operating system on his mobile phone and he's the head of NSA. I mean, what the hell happened, you know? And also Gina Haspel, you know, that degenerate. And before people think I'm just looking at, you know, ripping into um, uh, the, the US, here in the U EU, we have Claude Juncker, who's a drunk. He's a drunk. And thankfully, this is one thing that I'm really grateful for, for Donald Trump. He came here and he said that, you know, the people running the EU are idiot, idiots and drunks. That's right. Thank you. Yes. And there was a big, uh, you know, uh, I, I should bring it up because my, my family sent it to me with WTF uh, attached, a, a video about uh, Jean-Claude Juncker at some sort of event. And he's so drunk, the other heads of state have to prop him up. Because As he's going up the steps, right? Yes, I've seen that. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's actually a very good point, Catherine. I mean, when you look at some of these people, they look ill. They look unhealthy. They look like they've eaten too much. They've drunk too much. They've sat around too much and smoked their stupid cigars too much, way too much. They look, in fact, completely effed in the head. And um, these people are the ones who are loading it over the rest of us and heading militaries, heading intelligence agencies, heading governments. Give me a break. They're not leaders. You know, the, it is an absolute joke to see what they are doing, to recognize what they are doing, and then to actually look at them and see who they really are. Um, one thing about the weaponology that they are using, though, is what they're doing is they're doing it to control people. So all of it that they have permitted, the directed energy weapons testing that they have permitted, as well as the neuro experimentation being run by the CIA, DIA, with the dirty, dirty, extremely covert black ops neuro experimentation that they've uh, promoted and permitted, uh, which is really Manchurian candidate neuro experimentation, which is really biorobotization and complete body control and complete brain control and, and human takeover experimentation, which has no right, has no business existing in our societies. The, these these weapons that they have permitted are weapons of control. You know, whether people hear about it or know about it, even a fraction. I mean, you know, you and I, all of us here on this panel and many of the, many of our viewers are very sophisticated, un, you know, understanders and, and viewers and uh, readers of this technology. We know the stuff exists. We've read the patterns. We know enough about it. But some people in this country, especially the ones who read the deep, deep state times, I mean, the New York Times and, you know, the Washington Post and various other tomes, which cater to the CIA version of things, they're going to be shocked out of their minds when they hear about covert implants. Oh, my God. People have implants. I mean, for real, seriously, people have implants in them and people are being, you know, neurotech. Can that be possible? So when people hear the fraction like the, you know, they hear the tip of the iceberg info about this, they freak out and they shut up. And this is exactly what our badgers want. They want to go into neighborhoods, freak people out, shut them up and say, you know, this could be done to you or give them the hint that this could be done to you. And, you know, this is why alternative media in itself is shutting up. Look at alternative media. Look at, uh, you know, how brave they are. Look how openly they're speaking out. Look how often they interview us. Do you see any evidence of awareness there? I have absolute contempt for any media who can't step up. I'm sorry, but if you do not step up, this is most definitely coming your way because the fact that these weapons exist means that they are going to be used, they can be used on anybody and everybody. So everybody in the world needs to wake up. Everybody needs to get up and stand right beside us. Because what we are doing is we're standing up and saying, these weapons exist, these weapons are being used, and these weapons should be stopped. The people using these weapons should be stopped. Development on these weapons should be terminated, should be ended. You know, I don't care if the electronic warfare industry is like, you know, what, $500 billion in size or whatever. I really don't. Because what it means is it's the end of humanity. It's, it's absolute control. It's absolute takeover. How many of you really like the idea? No, I'm full of, I'm in, I am in full agreement. It's the death of everything on the earth. I mean, you cannot have electronic weapons without killing everything around you. And the more places get hit, the, the broader and broader the circle goes to dead zones. And then you're living on a planet that's a dead zone. This is the end of humanity. I'm in full agreement. At least with nuclear weapons, there was deterrent to use them. You couldn't use them secretly. And then you couldn't use the uh, town or uh, pasture land or whatever was exposed to it. You couldn't use it. So there was no... Uh, reason to use it if you wanted to take over a town or or their property or their land.
But now with um, directed energy weapons, you can say, hey, I'd really like Alaska. Let's just basically uh, microwave everybody in it. And then we've got the entire country and we've got the resources, you know, no animals. Um, but you've got the country and, and um, you know, the, the, uh, the soil, maybe. Of course, I don't even know if there's anything going to be living in the soil after being microwaved. So that may and be a moot way, point. That kind of thing has happened already. It happened in California. And did you all hear about the grease, the fires yes. in Greece, the directed energy weapons obviously being used over there, you know? That they're calling and wildfires and you're like, no, wildfires don't melt cars. And they don't leave bushes and trees standing where houses used to be. And, you know, the whole thing in Santa Rosa where they burned out the houses and then the trees will have standing. I've taken yeah. pictures of some trees here that are absolutely burned up. Oh, that's yes. That's happening here, too. Yeah. Totally green trees. And have you seen any birds lately? Yeah, if you are, if you've got trees that are standing in between you, line of sight, and whoever's hitting with the dew, those bushes or trees tend to die. And then all the trees and bushes around the house on the other side, they're fine. But right. if they're line of, line of sight, yeah, they start to die. And I have heard from multiple people that their apartment or house or whatever was being hit by directed energy weapons. And then all of a sudden, the city was coming out and cutting down the dying trees so that people didn't see that. Look at, you know, all the trees are good except for these, this one or two. What's going on here? They don't want that. So that is definitely a telltale sign. So if you're getting hit, you know, put up a lot of plants in your house and then see which ones are dying. And then I'll tell you the direction it's coming from. Mm -hmm. but Sorry, I... I I won't interject. I'll interject later. No, I was going to say, but, you know, there are things we can do. There are things we can all do. And, um, you know, that's the kind of conversation I've been having lately with a few people, including with, you know, Dr. Nick Begich, which I, um, you know, I conversed with him a couple of days ago, and I have to upload the video. I will shortly. One of the things he said was, you know, if every person on the planet actually started to take some action, whatever it is, take the action that seems correct to you, you know, become aware, become informed, but take the action that's correct to you then it's all it's going to create a wave that all of us taking action together is going to create a wave because most often people sort of looking at the you know hugeness of the surveillance state the hugeness of the military just kind of balk and say oh they're too big you know that's the government we can't do anything this is the way life is going i mean give me a break no you don't just sit back and take it you know you don't just sit back and take your own <coughs> enslavement you don't just accept it you exactly. unless you are a piece of rock or something unless you've been totally zombified out of existence and of course there are people who've been zombified out of existence you know certainly um yeah and the thing to say to these people is that um you know unless you're you're somebody who just uh lives alone and uh doesn't care okay that's maybe a strategy to take when you say okay i only have well, i don't know what how many years to live i want to have as much fun as possible fine but as soon as you have children or grandchildren the truth is they're very likely already brain chip and they are you know the ai is training interfacing with them and reading out their brain chip as they are playing around with their tablets and their mobile phones mm -hmm. yeah. So it actually, it behooves every single one of us to take some kind of action because literally this is the future of humanity. It's the future of our children. It's the future of our grandchildren that is at stake over here because there is going to be no future if these brain weapons are permitted to exist and permitted to be used yeah. on people. You know, what the NSA is doing, literally, I think, you know, all holds barred, uh, no holds barred, rather, if you actually look at what's going on, what's going on is, everybody's brain is being monitored. Yeah. Everybody's brain waves are being harvested. Some people become persons of interest. Obviously, when you monitor everybody's brains, I'm sure you're sitting down at a bank of you know, monitors, you can tell whose brain is doing this or whose brain is doing that and who seems to be somebody in charge of their own thinking and who's not, right? You can tell. And I'm sure just big data analysis, you can pick out the bright shining stars in the universe and go right after them target them, bring them down, take their lives down. That is what is being done today to, to, the, to what, who, are call, who are being called targeted individuals, which yeah. has become such a name that, you know, has so much attached to it. But ultimately, think of, think of those who are being targeted today as the ones who stand out in communities and who are being taken down first in order to facilitate a more complete takedown and absolute control of everybody else. 
Yeah, and actually the uh, the Second World War, because it's exactly the same uh, Masonic war plan for the uh, Vatican crime cartel being played out, I think, it, it shows you exactly the template. So when the Nazis marched into Poland, they had the Intelligenz Aktion. So before the war, they identified the, the, the thinkers and the people who had, you know, had their, their stuff together, so to speak, had a clear mind. And then when the, the Nazis did first the analysis to know who they wanted, who would be a thought leader, who could, you know, articulate themselves, who would be trusted in the community. And then when they marched in, all they did is round them up and shoot them in the head in the street. That was the Intelligenz Aktion. And it had two phases. It had the shooting in the head bit, which was the big showdown, but it had absolutely years of monitoring where they identified absolutely everybody who could possibly be a danger. And what's not said, which is I think what I'm seeing more and more is that there was the big thought leaders and there was all the people who were maybe more quiet, but were known in the community to be bright. And they were killed silently in the Holocaust later to then leave a society that was uh, yeah, a bunch of gibbering morons you know, more or less, that's the goal. And they have made it very clear that what they want is they want to have masses of easy to exploit gibbering morons, then they want to have a class of uh, sex slaves and prostitutes, and they want to have a few technicians, but not too many so that they could actually be a danger because these techies would actually know how to use the weapons, you know. Um, and then the goal is to have these, you know, big emperors using their hookers and uh yeah eating and sleeping and that's it and the techies take care of everything yeah robots zombies cyborgs and very compliant people and you know they're also interested in the global brain they are interested in the swarm intelligence the ai that take that that's everybody's brains connected to the internet apparently i yeah, mean but it's not to you know i've never ever seen anybody who just uh walked across my path because he was ai enabled and he just dazzled me with his incredible intelligence that was, you know, light years ahead of anything I've seen at CERN. It just yes. doesn't happen. So it doesn't seem to be part of the plan. And yet, if you look at those TED Talks, if you go look at DARPA TV, which I certainly, which I've just discovered is a thing. DARPA TV, although I actually have, you know, featured some of their videos before in my need to know reports, which I've got to start up again at some point. But um, DARPA TV and these DARPA scientists and the guys who come out on TED Talks, you know, the, the sort of diet in the world robotics, artificial intelligence scientists who really think AI is the future, AI is coming, there is no getting around it. That's what they project. That's what these guys are all projecting, that this is the future. This is our techno future. And they put it in terms of, you know, oh, look at humans, you know, for millions of years, they were just using little arrowheads and uh, trying to break stones. And look, we've come such a long way. And the next step in human evolution is connecting our brains to the internet, having nanotech in our brains and wearing neural lace and neuroprosthetics and being neurologically enhanced in this fashion and having all this AI so we can learn languages in a minute or whatever, you know, and um, so forth. I don't know how that's going to help humanity, but these scientists are convinced that's the next step and it's coming. It's like there's no issue of consent or asking anybody's opinion. It's coming, according to them. Why? Because they're able to do it. Yeah. I mean, nanotech aerosols, think about it. You know, nobody asked our opinion there. They just started to rain down these nanobots on us. And, you know, when I actually look at the, because now the program is being rolled out, um, so we can already tell what the program is. And when I look on the ground, what is the program? I have two major pillars, which is uh, a genocide, targeted killing of families, and especially families of integrity. And if they identify you, they will identify your siblings, your sisters, your cousins, your daughters, more certainly, and your sons, because they'll have similar genetics. So they will assume they will also be too good as like you, and they can really be with all of you. So it's the kind of generational targeting that I see for killing, okay? And the other thing is a massive element of sexual trafficking. It is about sex and killing. That's all it is. And um, there, all I see is really just the dumbest, most gormless, pathetic nonsense. And I think it comes down to the fact that these guys are psychopaths. They seem highly functional, but they're actually mentally degenerate. These people giving the talks, they actually have a screw loose, but it just, it just works fine. So, for example, in, um, in Oxford and especially in physics and maths, you have a lot of people who are high functioning autistic and you don't notice that there's anything different about them, you know. And then sometimes they would malfunction and it would be like, whoa, what the hell just happened? You know, 
and there would be absolutely no way of you know getting... well they're very monolithic thinkers you know and they've got the goal to sit sit back and set themselves up as the arbiters of human decision making i mean who are they to make decisions for humanity who exactly. are they you know how dare they and this is why by the way military neuroscience has also set up neuroethics side by side and this is how you have a neuroscientist like Giordano at the leading edge of weaponized neuroscience and the assault of humanity, um, also setting himself up as a leading neuroethicist. And in fact, explaining to other people what neuroethics is all about, while at the same time, he's flouting every principle of basic human rights and basic humanity in the process. The basic, the first principle of neuroethics should be who exactly decides can one human being decide for another human being what should or should not be in their heads and to what extent their brains should be developed or not be developed, you know, you by know, artificial techno means? Yeah, this, this, um, this question has been answered a very, very long time ago with a resounding no. And this is a, you know, well established. Oh, going back to Delgado, et cetera, and Brzezinski. Yes, the psycho-civilized society. Well, exactly. But both Delgado and Brzezinski are both psychopathic. Right. Of course they are. We've got yeah. psychopaths, yes. Absolutely. And, and this is one thing that I think our society has never wrapped their head around, it, you know, surprisingly, because it's so prevalent. It's, you know, I mentioned the artistic people because somehow in our society, it's okay to just point at the artists and say, oh, yes, they need to have special treatment. Well, they actually don't because they are mostly harmless. Okay. I've never had any problem. But with these psychopaths, they need to be contained. The psychopaths are the only breed in our society that needs to have high 24-7 surveillance because they are out of control and they will kill with impunity if they can. Not all of them, of course. Some of them are neuroscientists, you know, like Jim Fallon or what's his name. But they can and they will feel no remorse. They are the most dangerous breed of mental aberration that we have on the planet. And yet they are the people who are flying under the radar all the time. You know, and I just wanted to say this example that, yes, I, you know, I, it's not actually required to be autistic when you're working at CERN, but it really helps a lot. So, you know, we used to have a lot of colleagues, right, who were, you know, uh, different, it's a spectrum, right? But I've seen some extreme cases that took me totally by surprise. And then I had to remember, okay, hang on, you have to talk to Rain Man this way, and then you can get somewhere, but don't try to get do it that way. But, you know, with a psychopath, there's no way for you to ever get through. And this is what I mean. These people seem normal. They give normal talks. You don't think that they are, you know, axe wielding mass murderers, mm -hmm. but they are. They actually are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, because because we have mainstream media, which acts like, you know, the lackey of these technocrats, um, there is no public analysis. There is no public discourse. There is no public discussion of any of these technologies. There is simply these sort of milk and water, insipid, highly diluted, ridiculous little pieces just presenting the tech and presenting the words and opinions and lunacy of these scientists, these mad scientists who are pretty much saying, you know, this is the next step in the road. This is how human brains are going to be taken over. And that's that. And you've got the Washington Post simply presenting it like, oh, I see. That's the next technology down the road. That's it. No discourse, nothing. I don't even know. I don't even think some of these newspapers allow comments on the online anymore. Some of them have shut those down, you know. Oh, gosh. Talking about online comments, uh, just a while back, I have to remember which year, one year, one or two years ago, it was the 60th birthday of the BND, German intelligence. And um, the major uh, state broadcaster, as in the state, uh, you know, brainwash uh, machinery, put out an article about happy birthday BND and aren't you great? And they had a little comment while well, the, the news article came online at I think 8.30 in the morning and at 2 p.m. they had to shut the comments down because people ripped them to shreds. They started talking about Gladio, they started talking about the BND being involved absolutely everywhere around the world. That's very they, interesting. Uh, That's they, what we and, need, and we need open commentary. Yeah, exactly. And it was beautiful to see because I was thinking, yes, exactly. Happy birthday, BND. Happy mm -hmm. birthday. You got it right there, you know, from all around the country. It was beautiful, really, to see. Well, yes. Apparently, the FBI had an anniversary as well recently, the 110th. Mm -hmm. The last anniversary, I hope. I hope that mm -hmm. organization, one of the markedly corrupt and criminal organizations in this country, you know, like the CIA, is wiped out of existence. Yeah, I think they have to raise it to the ground and start again. I just don't see how you salvage it. I really don't. 
And yet they keep projecting on the hill this kind of, you know, image of uprightness and virtue, which is so shocking to me. <laughs> I think, you know what, ladies, I think it's also that all of this is about projection. It's an, it's an attempted psyop. They are attempting to fool us, but they haven't managed. What Giordano is trying to do is he's attempting to normalize it, but he crashed and burned. You know, because as soon as we saw it, we saw for what criminality it was standing. And that's what we have to see. We have to actually put the picture right. And, and um, just like, for example, with the uh, the Twitter impressions, the Twitter follower number and the impressions, and especially the YouTube views, mm -hmm. it is a big psyop. Yeah. If the people knew how many viewers they truly had, they would never ever bother approaching uh, the mainstream media because maybe they would find out that actually the mainstream media is not read by anybody. I don't know a single person who read it, you know, or reads it these days, not a single person. I just don't know who these people are who read The Guardian and the, the Times. You know, last time I read it, it was because St. John's College had it actually, you know, or ordered and we had a newspaper room and all the major newspapers, including foreign ones, you could mm -hmm. read after lunch. And I watched the faces of the fellows and they would read something and then throw this thing away in disgust and then march off. So I don't think anybody actually spends any money to read this stuff. That's maybe the real truth. And... um. You know, um, a relative of mine spoke with somebody running a kiosk and, um, you know, she said, uh, you know, how many of these are you selling? And this guy said, well, sometimes none. And, you know, uh, my relative said, oh, so how does this work? And, and he said, well, you have a, if you're running a kiosk, you have an agreement with the newspapers that they, you know, uh, give you the copies. They bring it in the morning, but in the evening they are taking it away again and you're only yeah. paying for the copies that you actually sold. Because otherwise, no one would ever run these newspapers anymore. Because the truth is, no one is buying it. That's what they're trying to cover up. That's probably right. Everything is online these days. Everyone gets their news from online. And, you know, frankly, well, I get my news from the Twitter feed every morning. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't been. I mean, the, the only time I go to The Guardian or these, yeah. these other newspapers is when I really want to do a study in cartel signaling. And I want to find out what the criminal network has announced now. And then yeah. I get the sad thing is, you know, they do have a news gathering uh, distribution network. You know, they have that. Reuters AP has thousands of reporters on the ground. You know, people everywhere, they've got the setup. They've got the setup and therefore they've got the way to filter what it can and can't be disse disseminated or published. Um, and therefore become fodder for public discourse. You know, so they define public discourse that way. They have enormous power. Yeah. The media does have enormous power, but as you say, people are beginning to wake up, I hope, you know, and increasingly move in the direction of citizen journalism and alternative media that's a little bit bolder and braver and putting the truth out there. Uh, but, you know, as far as targeting is concerned, as far as neuroweapon use on humanity is concerned, um, I've got a big beef with alternative media on that score. Um, I'm really at this point sick and tired of everybody who doesn't cover it. And, you know, they need to be, they need to be um, continually informed by people like us who can see what's going on and on whom weapons are being used. You know, they need to be continuously reported to and informed by people like us that this is indeed happening and everybody needs to sit up and take notice. Everybody needs to take action or just sort of roll over and get rolled over by these people, you know, get bulldozed by these people, get bulldozed by this huge control mechanism. You know, I, I think we should go a step further because one of the things I started doing is I'm, I'm not just reporting to the media anymore. I'm reporting myself here on my website uh, about the journalist hall of shame. There will be a hall of shame perhaps with every profession here, but I'm now reporting about the journalists who are not reporting. So here. Oh, we, yes, yes. What do we do? And, and I just keep adding to that. So, you know, Luke Harding, oh, by the way, I contacted... So here, the Sputnik News, but the interview was actually quite good. I've just contacted some three German magazines who were reporting about um, the victims who heard voices and, uh, you know, were attacked by directed energy weapons and then went and killed somebody. So I reported it now to the Frankfurter Allgemeine, to the Westdeutsche Allgemeine Zeitung and the Saarbrücker Zeitung. And I told them, you know, there's a second story here. Would you like to, you know, do a counter expose and mm -hmm. report about that? And please get in touch with me if you want to know more about criminality going on that can trigger that. And none of them replied. So now I'm, I'm reporting about them being in on it and willfully 
blocking the alternative story because they, I think they're in on it. They're criminals in on it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, as I've said before, I think it's time for us to create our own media and to start reporting the truth and let people see for themselves what really is going on and figure out that what they're not getting from mainstream media or, you know, the fact that the lies that they're getting from mainstream media are indeed what they are. They're lies and they're cover-ups and they're facade, cover, facade operations and facade stories. They're cover stories, you know, to, to keep the truth at bay. Uh, for as long as the CIA and the NSA and the DIA wanted, because I understand um, that um, what the U.S. military and intelligence agencies like to do is they like to create uh, terrible, deadly weapons, test it out and experiment on vast populations, and then maybe 40 years down the road or 20 years down the road, they might give an inkling of an awareness to the people that, you know, yes, a small confession. Yes, we did use some weapons. We did experiment. We did develop some weapons while hiding the bulk of the worst info from people, you know. Well, from, even an apology, e even an apology like uh, President Clinton gave. Oh, yes, President right. Clinton, I remember that. And what was that about? Was that about the use of um, weapons on uh, the, the Guatemalans, the syphilis experiments? Or was it? It was actually on, on the use of, of, of some Americans. Was it the radiation uh, experiments, the plutonium experiments? Maybe that's, uh, that was it, the AC. Tuskegee too, maybe. Yeah. 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 Got, to, got to look up that reference to be accurate. But, uh, but yes, that's a good example. They come along several years. They, think that they can come along and do it several years down the road. Well, I think, you know, we are here to say BS to that. And then, you know what, this is one of um, what one of the uh, agents uh, said to me over Twitter, you know, he or she said, oh, I think you're, you know, when you're reporting about all the horrific stuff that's being done to you, and then, and then the, the person said, oh, I think you might be uh, owed an apology. It's like, no, 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 no. sorry. Old, you know, absolutely millions and taught. And trillions, that's trillions of dollars. You know, how dare they touch yeah. anybody's life? Because that's mm -hmm. what they've done. They have touched people's lives and taken down people's lives. Yeah, exactly. They had no effing right to touch mm -hmm. anybody's life whatsoever. Informed consent is a thing. They cannot do anything without informed consent. They cannot put people on watch lists. And this is the other joke, Karen. And this brings us back to your flyer, actually, as we get close to closing the show at this point, um, is that they start in this country with putting people on watch lists and then deciding that people who are watch listed, who are surveilled, who are surveillees, are then clean fodder for experimentation by the CIA and the DIA and can be fed into the pipeline of directed energy weapons testing contracts with defense contractors. You know, because you're under surveillance, you can be used, your body can be used. Are you effing kidding me? Who wrote that down? Who wrote that down in an executive order? Who wrote that down in a military directive? How dare they? What planet are they living on? I mean, it's yeah. unconstitutional. I mean, you cannot declare somebody non-human. Let me, let, let me read the words of President Clinton uh, in October 1995. Mm -hmm. President Clinton apologized Tuesday to the survivors and families of those who unknowingly were subjects of government-sponsored radiation experiments and ordered his cabinet to devise a system of relief, including financial compensation. When the government does wrong, we have a moral responsibility to admit it. Clinton said, the duty we owe to one another to tell the truth and to protect our fellow citizens from excesses like these is one we can never walk away from. Saying our government failed in that duty, he apologized to all the American people who must be able to rely upon the United States to keep its word to tell the truth and to do the right thing. Thing. Oh, my God. And that was 40 years later, right? He did that in the 90s. And he's yeah. talking about the radiation experiments in the right. 50s. Right. 40 they years later. People, 40 years later, you got, uh, you know, a lukewarm apology from a sex offender. 
And who talks about when the government does wrong. No, I'm sorry. That's not that the government's doing any wrong. The go- that's just the government doing policy. That's their policy. This is how they've been operating. And when you look back at the history of illegal experimentation in this country, you begin to understand that. You begin to see it's been policy. This is the way they're doing it. They have no right to do it. They have to be stopped. Yeah, and they have no. to so, they've got the attitude, sorry, just very quickly, they've got the attitude that the government owns you, mm-hmm. and therefore they can do that. And then, oh, you know, a few decades later, say, oops, sorry, do it again. A few mm-hmm. decades later, apologize again, do it again. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it's insane. Making money. I mean, right now, at this point in time, we all see very clearly how they're making trillions and trillions of dollars over oh, yeah. contracts, you know. How many well, people are benefiting from this? How the industries are being supported? How society right. in itself is being upheld by this evil. That speech was made in 1995. The very next year is when I was told by a, a, a first cousin, Millicent, we were told we could blame anything on you. Yeah. The, yep. the That's Guatemala. How they're doing it. That's exactly how they're mm-hmm. doing it to everybody who's targeted. You know? yep. and, and the Guatemala syphilis experiment uh, occurred in 1946. And I attended the hearings in 2011 in Washington, D.C. Oh, yes, Millicent. I actually want to cover those hearings one more time. I want to do it on video. I'd like to bring up a few people who actually went to those Bioethical Commission hearings. And we need to have a roundtable podcast about that because it is outrageous. That was an example of people in 2010 and 2011, right? Or was it 2011 and 2012? 2011. 2011, mostly 2011, maybe it was March and October of that year. There were two sets of meetings in Washington, D.C. and in New York. And hundreds, hundreds of people who were targeted showed up for the meetings and were turned away. Ultimately, I think between 40 to 60 people were allowed to talk and give their testimonial. And at the end of it, you have the, the person in charge, and that was Amy Gutman, German name. Uh, I'm not saying any more. I have no idea about her mm. background, but German name. Amy Gutman chair of, you know, she was dean of Penn State, I think, at the time. She was the chair of this committee. And she and there was somebody else, Valerie somebody, I forget her last name, who the executive director of this committee, who wrote that letter, that famous letter. It's on my website. But it's a letter pretty much telling everybody, we are no longer going to be taking any the testimonials of anyone who says that they are targeted, because these are regulatory affairs and uh, justice, criminal justice affairs, to be referred to the Department of Justice. Oh, really? Yeah, my, you know what, it's, it's just as well, because um, what we need to do is to we bring criminal charges against every, everybody, because the other thing I also uh, want to say, for example, they did it in South Africa, the, the what's it called, Truth and Reconciliation, where everybody could weep their hearts out, and then they were told to F off, and that was that. This is not how justice is working. No, but- you don't let them set up the commissions and the tribunals. You see, so this, the president's bioethical commission, again, is another example, just like Giordano being a neuroethicist. It's exactly like that. They set up the bioethical commissions. And by the way, the irony is that this particular bioethical commission was supposed to find out if the kinds of things that had happened, you know, with the Guatemalans and the Tuskegee, syphilis, et cetera, if those kinds of things were happening. And you have hundreds of people coming out of the woodwork saying, yes, it's happening. And then you have these stupid people on the board coming out of their statements saying, well, we looked into it and we find that, no, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Ramola, the commission wrote a very long report finding that the United States was guilty of using the people in Guatemala in that syphilis experiment. Yes, in Guatemala, but. But, but not here, right? They didn't well, take they into account. They weren't commissioned the to, to examine that the here. I think, they were, I think the reason we were invited was they were looking for people for dual experiments. I mean, I was in the room in, in Washington, D.C., March 1st, 2011, right after the meeting was adjourned. The entire 12 panel board was issued into a luncheon with the Marines in the back of the room who were waiting in uniform. Exactly. Yes. And you see, this is what they have done at the Bioethical Commission meetings, Millicent, is exactly what they've done at the SACHUP meetings. So the SACHUP meetings are the Secretary's Advisory Commission for Human Research Protection meetings. There were several meetings held over a space of five years as they strove to revise the common rule. 
the common rule is based on the Belmont Report, which is based on the Nuremberg Commission Conventions. And it is supposed to ensure informed consent in the case of any kind of medical research. Okay. So, however, what the SACHOP Commission has done is they have permitted a period for public comment. So people came up and spoke. I mean, many people who are targeted have gone up there and spoken. You know, Norman Rubin has gone up and spoken. Carlos Smith has gone up and spoken. Kate Ryan has gone up and spoken. I covered this to some extent, I think on one of their last final meetings um, before they decided that they're going to finalize the common rule or whatever. And um, that's on my website. That what they, what they did there was they took people's testimony. They gave them five minutes to speak at the very end of the day. And they didn't act on it. And they, one of the things they said, I think, to Kate Ryan, for instance, is that, oh, you know, it's all the, the classified people, the CIA, you should, you, should, you should talk to them. Really? We talk to the CIA when we've got the Office of Human Research Protections run through the Department of Health and Human Services, which is supposed to look into this. How can you talk to the CIA when they cover and classify everything? Exactly. Well, the, what, this, what these people were... Um, again, people didn't see it because just because everybody got badged, they know if they write the word ethical. Or look at this war criminal Giordano. Just because see, they made the biggest war criminal the the head of what's it? The, you know, neuroethics nonsense. He's a war criminal. He's a criminal thug. And as soon as they put ethical there and they put them on a panel with name tags. People think, oh, yeah, these people are there to really help us. No, I think Millicent is right. They were there looking for new people to harvest. You know, who haven't we harvested enough that they can still make it to Washington, D.C.? This means that you're still, there's still some finances we can get at. And, you can and still speaking it. out. Exactly. How come you're still speaking? <laughs> you've thrown all this, like, high-tech information, yeah. still string together a sentence. We need to do research on you, son, because you still can bring your sentences together. We made their point. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And, you know, we, we should mention at this point, and, you know, the reason I brought up Amy Gutman's name being German is obviously because of Project Paperclub. You know, yeah. I don't know if she's not. You know, she, she might be from a Nazi family, let's say. She she, might be yeah, but that's family. what I mean. That species exists in this country, okay? And where do they exist? They exist in the military. They exist in the intelligence agencies. And they exist in the universities. They are, they are operating in top leadership positions in universities. They're on the boards of directors. What are they called in universities? Um, chancellors, the boards yeah. of something or the other. So, you know, that's how they rise to these top ranks. And that's how they're running this whole, this whole operation, which is, as Dr. Eric Alstrom frequently reminds, me is a Zionazi operation. So. Yeah, it, 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 well, and I mentioned, I, I mentioned that when I investigated those twelve members, twenty five percent of them had an affiliation with Vanderbilt University right. Medical Center, who, by the way, has it, its own lobbying office in Washington D.C. Wow. Yes. A yes. university with its own lobby, so it's got to lobby Congress people for something. This is mind blowing. I mean, want to say Millicent's research will knock off of over horse. It is just, I mean, the stuff you've uncovered. You no, know, we've got enough information and we do so much research. We really don't have enough time to cover all of the stories and the info that we have. I really don't. We do need to, to run our own media operations ourselves. I do think we can absolutely run our own media operations, you know, which will be putting out the absolute truth about what's going on and demanding, demanding that, you know, um, the public become involved, engage in public discourse in everything and make their thoughts and feelings known and heard because that's the opposite of what's going on currently what's going on currently is suppression oppression repression and the holding down of the public voice you know the keeping down of the public voice um and these people when the criminals themselves you know run the asylum and get to say what's ethical and get to say what's permissible and what's not that's when you have a situation of absolute um inviolate corrupt corruption absolute corruption you know, so that's something that it's it's up to us to make a difference. But I just want to ask you guys a question. Are you is your feed all being messed with? Because over here on my video, everybody's very jerky and awkward. I, I can just see you as jerky. I, the other ah, side. OK. Yes. Yeah, so somebody... No, I'm not saying it. I'm Millicent not saying that. It looks beautifully crisp, clear, and I could hear her perfectly. And it's wonderful. I actually yes, it's... I want to say. What, what I wanted to say is actually, you know, many people don't know, but Millicent has so much research 
it is a lot and we need it for for court cases one idea was i'm just going to float it live maybe you know viewers can also say what they think about it maybe one idea would be to have a show where we're just walking uh talking through these documents you know that millicent has um uh put together because more people than her and and us need to put it into the court cases and we actually talk through the meaning of all the different parts you know the military documents these sort of um the evidence that she brings up because it's all top notch and then what if we had you know one show where we're just focusing on the on the references and documentation with the idea that we're talking it through and then people can take the document put it into their court case and know what to say to a judge you know about that what's in there because there's so much written documentation and I'm now, I'm just now for the finish line, you know, we're just working towards court cases to arrest these people. And then we put all our effort into making sure that the court cases actually do arrest them, put them into jail and don't let them get off the hook, you know? By the way, one of the things I wanted to say, I know we have to wrap up. I just wanted to show one document I made. It's just um, very short and mostly images, but mm -hmm. um, I Know that by now there's a lot of my neighbors in Onto Engstringen who can speak English are by now watching. <laughs> I actually have evidence for this now, you know, um, and I would like to tell them, but also many, many other people who are coming online every week, um, you know, because the viewer numbers go up, what to do. If you're a target, there's, you have to go through the high intensity program of what to do, of collecting evidence. But if you're just interested, or just shocked and you fear that you might have a chip or your children might have a chip. Yes, they do. They all do. Your grandchildren for sure. What the hell to do about it? How the hell to, to um, you know, go about um, flipping the system back to where it should be. I just made a little thing that people can print off and somebody said um, they stuck it on their fridge. And I think this is what everybody should do in the country. Um, so on my website here under the FAQ, I made a little guide to how to um, recapture um, a system, a broken or criminal system. It's this one here, system recapture, quick guide. And I just want to point to it because in simple steps, I'm explaining how you can recapture a system from organized crime. If we are all doing this, we will be finished with this project before the end of the year. And it's simple steps. You know, the first thing is the system broadcast, and that could be just your neighborhood campaign. Tell your neighbors what's going on then recruit individuals who can really help you. This is, you know, what we're trying to do on the team here. We found each other and each one of us has their own expertise, but then really start reaching out using the networks of the people you know really well and use personal recommendations, you know? Be passed to say journalists or local politicians or maybe somebody's related to police officer and talk to them, but always rely on personal recommendations because that's the quickest way to really open doors for you. And then also build trust, go up online on social media, on YouTube, so that people can get to know you who are not in your community. You know, if they can't personally meet you, it really helps if you're showing a consistent picture on social media and you're building trust um, in, the, in the new global world where, you know, we have, sometimes have to reach out to people on other continents, like I had to, to get somewhere. And then eventually, I just would like to say the last two steps are you have to go out there is no there is no answer what to do to recapture the system but you have to try everything you know little wheels little cycles and just do something do something and then iterate on it it's much better than to sit on your hands and think oh no i'm not going to do it because it's not good enough do something now today this week and then iterate on it and then eventually what we have to do is we have to identify the key infrastructure that can be captured. We have to identify the criminals, okay, here. And this is where my neighbors, I've identified my neighbors, but then it's all about collecting the evidence, okay, really forensic uh, evidence. And then once we're pretty sure about who the criminals are, we go after them in a group in court. This is the plan, you know? And then I would say, as you're doing it, every single day, try to help somebody. If we're all doing this, if we all help each other, then, uh, you know, we will get very, very far. But also use little diagrams like that to get across to people what they have to do. But these are, these are pretty much the steps, you know. And today I had a personal experience because I was, um, my car got sabotaged. My car got sabotaged now, I think, three or four times. But today they knocked it out. And um, I just pulled over next to a forest and um, I, I had to flee my flat because of the machine gunning. So I work in my car and then I work all around Switzerland and random places because I can't use my home. 
So I pulled over. I think my car went over a little, little hump, you know, next to the forest. And then the car cut out and it wouldn't restart. So I opened the bonnet and I found a cable that was cl cut by a wire cutter because the surface was clean. It was just clean. So they just, you know, kind of cut it all around and left a few threads. And then as soon as they cut, you know, I was stuck. But as I was stuck there, eventually, you know, I called uh, road rescue. But then as I was stuck there, there was somebody else who pulled up. And we, just, we were just chatting randomly, you know. And this person really tried to help me. I don't think they were perp because they were parked nearby and they didn't really know that I was going to come. But uh, it's little things like that. And he really stuck with me and just, you know, uh, talked to me all throughout until a rescue was there to make sure I'm not alone. You know, that was great. That's really great. And it's little things sometimes, but it's it's through really these little things that will rebuild everything because we have to rebuild everything from scratch. Happened, were you actually driving when your car stopped running? Not this time. Last time they EMP'd it, yes. And then it just went kaboom, you know, it just went dead, you know. But last time, fortunately, they did it. Um, a car was waiting and I was thinking, why is he not driving off? So the light turned green and I just pulled up behind him. And as soon as I pulled up, all I could hear was kadunk, and then the dashboard was dead. You know, wow. I think it was an electromagnetic pulse, like the done by the German weapons company Deal and Rheinmetall. They are advertising how they can stop cars while they stop mine, and they were kind enough to do it when I ended. It was just rolling; it wasn't driving at uh, you know 100 miles per hour. But there are people who report having that done to them when you're on the motorway. You know, a laser could also have cut your wire. Yes, that's what I, I, it, I suspect that. But um, in the moment when it was ultimately cut, I managed to ignite it in my garage and drive and it was fine. Okay. And I, that was, I don't think it's a laser this time, but last time it most definitely was a you, a hundred percent. And this pretty much looked like somebody took a laser, you know, when you've got many wires and you have these round cutters and you just cut the, the wires one by one and you leave a few threads. And then you just wait oh, for the okay. to wow. go. I think it was. So anyway, ladies, we have to wrap up. So if anyone wants to give the last minute um, talks, go for it. This is one thing I wanted to add. Uh, Ramola, at one point you were talking about the fact that people don't want to believe that they are chipped. Yeah. And some of them will actually argue you down that that couldn't be possible. Yes, exactly. I, I had a woman walk in to visit me one day and she said that to me. And it just happened to have been the day that I received the radio frequency uh, meter that Catherine sent me. And I said, well, let's just check. She said, oh, there's no way. I mean, she was very, very adamant and, and, and very sophisticated in her refusal. And so she turned it on and started pointing it at herself and it started going off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she was quickly decomposed. <laughs> you mean discomposed? <laughs> All the decomposed is what we want to apply to certain okay. other people we know. Thank you for correcting me. Yes. But <laughs> just astonished. <laughs> there are at least four. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. You know, that that's what happened to me. I had um, you know, I had uh some relatives and uh they they were absolutely incredulous, but they had little aches and so on and weird aches and joints. And I just said, hey, let's just check. And I pointed mm -hmm. in exactly in the joints where they had aches for a long time that they couldn't quite figure out why. They thought, oh, it's maybe a sports injury or just, and it wasn't something terrible. It was just like, oh, it really hurts. I should take some drugs. This is the point, right? And actually it was a chip. It was a chip. Just that, you know. And, and then you realize these guys have been making money with this for decades. Sure. Yeah, I would, you know, just as we're all being nanoteched, you know, and given that they've got them loaded up in vaccines now as well, um, you know, you have to wonder if everybody is not chipped. The way people behave? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I read an article in 2005 that by May of that year, everyone in this nation was supposed to have been chipped. Oh, my. Now, that was 13 years ago. Yeah, and we've got lots of info on various people giving that kind of testimony that, you know, tracking chips were being used, etc. So, so, anyway, it's been a very interesting morning. We've kind of gone all over the map over here. We've been discussing psychopaths and uh, weaponized neuroscience criminals and 
Nazi paper club, Nazi episode. criminals. Sorry? <laughs> I said it's the off-roading episode. We went everywhere like a jeep, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Although we started with Kat, uh, with Karen's uh, fabulous flyer, and let's end with Karen's fabulous flyer. I mean, that's a beautiful and brilliant flyer. It obviously took a lot Thank of you. work and a lot of thinking went into it just to pull all of those references together, and uh, both the article references and all the legal references. And it's a real heads up to law enforcement out there. So if any police or sheriff's deputies are watching us and uh, striving to become better people do go read that flyer and start thinking seriously about what you are saying yes to in your own communities. Because, you know, the takedown of America, like the takedown of any nation, doesn't happen in some kind of large way. It happens in very small ways. And it happens locally. You know, it, ha it happens locally with individual actions and inactions. And this flyer is a heads up to the police to say, you guys can take some better action, you know. You can show, show us a better way of being. You can act like real people whom we can look up to in the community rather than total sellouts who are simply kowtowing to the global new world dystopia disorder and uh, you know, kowtowing to central bankers, federal re reservists, Rothschilds and other lunatics, you know, sorry. Is this, this, this um, flyer, is it um, in PDF format? Because I think we should just have it up on a website so people download it, print it off, and just most police uh, stations have a post box. Throw it in that post box. Yes, it's a seven-page flyer. So <laughs> that's why I call it a letter. <laughs> yeah, but just I mean, printing off seven pages costs absolutely nothing. So you just... it is PDF. It's on my website in PDF okay. form, so anyone can download it. Yeah. Fantastic, because then, you know, just imagine people would just download it and throw it into the post box of their local police station. You don't even have to talk to them. Just put No, it you don't. Don't even put your name on it. Just throw it in an envelope and send it, you know, to a bunch of people. Exactly, exactly. Movie. Yeah. That's what I've told people. I said, look, you know, it's got, it's got somebody else's name at the bottom of it. You know, just throw it in the mailbox. <laughs> yeah, we are not afraid to have our names on this because I think the police know us really well right now because they're probably sitting around watching Techno Crime Fighters Forum every single week, desperate for tips, desperate for ways <laughs> to improve their act here. So, you know, we've got lots of advice for them. For one thing, drop those guns, drop those bulletproof vests, you know, stop acting like jerks. What else can we tell them? Protect us. Yeah, that, that's what you're paid to do. You're not paid to be parasites. Exactly. Yeah. But I do want to thank the protect us the all people. else, but that's, that's, that's <laughs> my style, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they should be shamed. I mean, you know, they're doing exactly the opposite of what they thought they were doing or what they they pretend that they're doing, you know? They're, they're just out of control. I mean, when you move over to a totalitarian society, you start hiring different types of people to be police. You know, the police beforehand would be altruistic. They would try to, to um, talk people off of uh, bridges and window ledges. And now they're called to a, a potential suicide and they shoot the person. Yeah. Well, that helped. Yeah, That helped. Yeah. Thank you. Or, you or know? they use Eurotech to bring that person onto that windowsill on that ledge. Ready to I was going to say, now they know about the neurotech because, you know, and this is the other thing. This is something we should spend a whole show on at some point. You know, neurotech are being used to push people to extremes, extremes of emotion, extremes of rage, extremes of fear, and actually get into states of um, suicidal frenzy or homicidal frenzy and engage in those Manchurian candidate acts which so nicely roll into their little FBI corrupt gun control agendas, you know, and I'm speaking as somebody who has always believed in gun control, but who has changed my mind after seeing what's happening in this country. I'm speaking as somebody who always thought of myself as a liberal, social liberal and progressive. I now see very clearly what's being done with all of these labels with the left and the right, with the um, pro progressive slash conservative paradigm labels, the left, right labels. And, you know, at this point, I'm looking at it in terms of globalist versus nationalist, 
globalist versus individual sovereignty. And, you know, the, the globalist thug bankers and criminal cart cartel networks versus individual freedom, liberty and humanity, you know. So that's how I'm seeing it these days. That's my politics. So, and I think it's the politics of many of us, right? Those of us who can see this. Well, especially because we're all criminal investigators now. So we all just think in terms of the criminals versus us. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> right. And on that note, I guess at this point, we should uh, bid our viewers goodbye and say thank you very much for watching. And... Um, we will see you again very soon next week and hopefully have um, a very focused show next time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.